His wife, or widow, I should say, several months later, was arrested and brought to the collection point to prepare for deportation at the school in Kleine Sperlgasse II, which you see here in the photograph. Irma wrote letters to her children while she was imprisoned there. Her daughter got a hold of the letters after the war because somebody had managed to smuggle them out. Her daughter has saved herself by emigrating to the United States at the last moment. In retrospect, it's very difficult to read these letters because Irma writes how she is going to write to her children when she arrives at the unknown destination in the East, when, in fact, along with 1,000 other people on the transport to the Minsk ghetto, she was, upon arrival, herded into a ditch and shot. Their son, Leopold Huppert, managed to escape to Belgium, but after the Nazis invaded, he was imprisoned and interned in the south of France, from where he also escaped. By March 1944, he was living in Rue Le Serre in Paris, which is here in the photograph, but was denounced, arrested, and deported from Drancy Transit Camp to Auschwitz. He was not gassed upon arrival, however, because of his electronic skills and the fact that he was in good health, so he was forced to, make, to do forced labor in the camp. As the Red Army approached Auschwitz, he and his fellow prisoners were moved and marched into further camps in the Reich, including Mauthausen here in Austria, Middle Baldora, where the prisoners were forced to build V-2 rockets for the Nazis, and he was last recorded alive in March 1945 in Grudnitz, a subcamp of Flossenburg concentration camp. Leopold Huppert did not live the remaining eight weeks of the war. He was 32 years old. So, last month, in preparation for TEDx Vienna, I thought I would look in the uh, Austrian Documentation Center and see if I could find any people that lived in this neighborhood, in the 7th District, and came across Irma Huppert and her son, Leopold Huppert. So I did some further uh, research online uh, in my own databases, and by the time I was done, Irma had a maiden name, Schlesinger, and Leopold had emigrated to Belgium and landed in the camp in which he probably died. Because you see, this essential basic information was missing from the official Austrian government source. Ferdinand appeared as well, because he wasn't in the source at all, and actually only appeared because his daughter left a testimonial for him at the Israeli memorial site Yad Vashem. Now, it's very easy to be judgmental about things that you don't completely understand, very complicated issues. I do know that historians and archivists working at government institutions are very good, very competent people, but I know, too, that these institutions are largely understaffed and underfunded. It's taken many of these governmental institutions 70 years to sort of get it half right. There's also a number of countries that openly collaborated with the Nazis that have not even begun to properly shed light on this dark chapter of their own histories. <laughs> 